excuse me, so two, section 2.2 2 is called solving combined inequality. So yesterday, we looked at like your basic inequality. So today, we're going to do inequalities again, but they're going to be a little more complicated, okay? So what do I mean by a little more complicated? You're going to have basically two different types. You're going to have your and inequality, and you're going to have your or inequality. And what happens is when you graph it, your and on a number line, if you have zero kind of in the middle, well, you can shift it right or left, whatever. But let's say <coughs> you have a closed circle over here and an open circle over here open circle over here, the and is going to be shaded in between, and the or, we'll do a little rough sketch over here too, let's say you have a closed circle over here, you're going to be shaded to the right, and maybe an open circle over here, you'll shade to the left. So the and is going to overlap in the middle, the or is going to go opposite directions. All right. <coughs> so that's what they look like graphically, but what do they look like as statements? So the statements, uh, the one on the left here, the and is what we call a conjunction. It's when your x is in the middle, so you might have x is less than 3, but then you're going to have a second part over here and you'll say, x is greater than or equal to negative 3. This is where we, or this is what we call a con, I can't spell today, conjunction. All right, the one on the right <coughs> is similar, but they're separated. So you're going to have x is less than negative 3 than the word or. X is greater than or equal to positive 3. This one is a disjunction. So let's see it in action. So you're kind of going to go two ways on the, on the problems. Either they're going to give you a graph and then ask you to write the statement, or they're going to give you the statement and ask you to graph it. So you'll be able to go either way. So for uh, example number one, I'm going to give you the graph, and you're going to be asked to write the statement. So here's a number line. Start with zero over here. We're going to have, what is that, negative one. At negative 1, an open circle, and then over at positive 5, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we're going to have a closed circle, fill it in, and then shade in between. I just make it a little thicker. <coughs> okay, so with the shading in between, is this going to be a conjunction or a disjunction? Conjunction. And your variable is going to be in the middle, right? You're going to have the two parts, okay? <coughs> so let's use the variable x. But you could pick something else if you really wanted to. And in this case, it's an open circle. So do I have the equal part? Nope, no equal part. So we're going to say x is greater than, notice I have the wider part facing the x. x is greater than negative 1. And over here, this is a closed circle. So am I going to have the equal part? Yes. So we're going to say x is less than or equal to 5. It's basically taking the two statements, x is greater than negative 1, and combining it with x is less than or equal to 5. Okay. Make sure you say and in the middle. All right, any questions on example number one? So they're going to give you a couple graphs. You'll need to either write it as a conjunction or a disjunction, depending on if it's overlapping in the middle or going opposite directions. All right, example number two. 
we're gonna um oh, that one's too easy yeah. we're gonna graph the following and we're gonna start with uh, an inequality So when it has more than one, more than two parts of an inequality, you can use the word compound. But basically, you want to get the variable by itself, okay? And usually it starts off in the middle. Um, so look and look and do what we did yesterday. Inverse operations. You want to get, you want to if it, the two is being added, you want to subtract it. So we're going to start with that. We're going to say minus two here, right? But think of it as three parts. So if you are subtracting two here, you have to subtract two here, and you have to subtract two here. So all three parts. Kind of like on an equation where you have two sides of the equal sign, you have to do it to both sides. So this has three, three areas you need to do that, okay? So negative three minus two is negative five. 2 minus 2 is 0, so we're just going to be left with negative d in the middle. And then negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. All right. Now we're left with negative d here. How do you undo the negative? You can multiply by one. negative 1, or you can divide by negative 1. It's kind of the same thing. So we're going to multiply by negative one, which means we need to multiply by negative one here and multiply by negative one here. Okay, I'm putting it in parentheses so it doesn't look like I'm just subtracting one, I'm actually multiplying by negative one. Now what was the special rule yesterday? <coughs> when we multiply or divide by a negative number, you have to do what? Reverse the inequalities, right? So since we have two of them, guess what? We gotta do both of them. Okay, so flip this one around and flip this one around as well. <coughs> and then simplify. So negative five times negative one is positive five. Negative D times negative one is positive D, which is what we want. And then negative three times <coughs> negative one is positive three. <coughs> now what you're gonna notice is that since we reversed um, the, inequ uh, the inequalities, and we actually ended up with the larger number on the left. Well, we want that larger number on the right. So I'm gonna write the five over here and the three over here, put my D in the middle. And so now I have to actually go, okay, this uh, with the three, the greater than or equal to was facing the D. So we wanna keep it the same, we're just moving it around, but it's keeping the same thing face, the same part of the inequality facing the variable. And then with the D and the five, the less than is facing the D. Okay. <coughs> so we didn't change the value, we just turned it around. Okay. So let's graph this. So if we're you if we need to put the focus on three and five, I'm gonna shift the zero over here and go one, two, three, there's three four, five. There's my three and my five. You got space, add a couple extra. Okay, now we're going to graph it. So at positive three, open or closed? Closed. Fill in that circle. At positive five, open or closed? Open. And then D is in the middle. D is greater than or equal to negative three, and D is less than or equal to five, so we shade in between. Try not to fill in that circle like I almost did. All right, any questions on example number two? All right, I'm gonna move it up. See it in just a second if you need to keep copying that down. All right, example number three. All right, we're gonna simplify and graph this one as well. So in the middle, 
We have 2x plus 5. We want to get that variable x by itself. So we're going to undo the 5. So we're going to uh, subtract 5 from all three parts. So minus 5, minus 5, minus 5. So 3 minus 5 is negative 2. These are opposites, so we're left with 2x. And then 2x is going to be less than or equal to 15 minus 5, which is 10. And then the last step, the x is being multiplied by 2, so we want to divide by 2. Do I need to reverse the inequalities? No, because it's positive 2, so we don't need to reverse it. Okay, so negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. These cancel, we're left with x. And 10 divided by 2 is 5. Is this one good for graphing? Yes, we've got the, the larger valued number on the right. So when we go to put it on the um, number line, we can graph it. So let's, let's put 0 about right here. That means negative 1's there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Add a couple over here. Add a couple over here. We've got room. Okay? X is greater than or equal to negative 1, and X is less than or equal to 5. So we need uh, both uh, have the equal sign. So open or close? Closed on both, right? So fill them both in. And this one is a conjunction, so it's shaded in between. And we're good to go with example number three. Okay. That's it for example, except for I need to tell you about one thing on the assignment. You're going to see a couple of them that are what I'm going to call, whoops, that should be a Y, tr slightly tricky. Okay. So, yes. Oh, right here. So this one should be open. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Got it. It's not the first time I've done something like that. All right. Thank you for catching that. All right. So you might see some on the assignment that are slightly tricky that might say something like y is greater than or equal to negative 1 and y is greater than or equal to 3. Okay. So let's go like we're going to graph that. If zero's here, that'll be negative one right there, two, three, positive three right there. Okay. So if you start to graph y is greater than or equal to negative one, you would have a closed circle right here, right? Bless you. And shaded this way, but it also because it has the word and, has to be greater than or equal to 3. So you'd have a closed circle here <coughs> and also shaded to the right because they're both greater than. You see that? Well, if they use the word and, you have to take where, where they're over, overlapping. So right in this area, it's not overlapping. So the answer is actually only this much of it. This part is not included in this part, if that makes sense. So there are gonna be a couple tricky ones like that. If you get to one and you're not sure how to deal with it, let me know, okay? I'm just pointing it out because you are gonna see it, okay? But most of them aren't tricky like that. Most of them are pretty straightforward, just solve them, graph them, okay? <clears throat> Any questions? All right. <coughs> So I'm going to get you guys started on 2.2. I'm going to pass, pass out the practice test, and then we're going to write some notes on it, like how many questions, what day we're going to do it, blah, 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 all that good stuff. Okay? Did you guys get started on 2.2? At some point, I'm going to walk around and stamp 2.1. So if you have it, put it on your desk. Thank you. This was yours, Nathan, right?
Stay tuned.